Guys, I was wrong about Four Rent. Yes, I was. Do I think Four Rent is a trash pack? Yes, I do. It is one of the worst packs since my wedding stories in terms of being severely broken. I still don't recommend this pack. I just want to make it clear. I haven't been clickbaiting you before by, you know, in my review when I said it's a bad pack because I still genuinely believe it is. However, there are a lot of gameplay avenues. Okay, you can't earn money as a landlord. Like sometimes it works, other times it doesn't. The the main landlord tenant events are broken and they're crap. However, there's a lot to this pack that I didn't really think about before that you can actually do. I already did a video recently where I made a properly functioning retirement home in the game. The actual retirement home I made was literally huge and I just feel like if I made the home a little bit smaller it probably would have felt a lot more alive. But it did pr work like pretty well. I even had like a little canteen in there. It's pretty cool. I've gone into this random house in the high school years well because I know there is a basement down here. I couldn't be bothered to build my own basement. I'm sorry. But I've heard a lot of people talk about the idea, okay, of literally renting out a basement. So to make it a little bit more realistic, okay, I'm gonna turn this big room into a big bathroom, but I'm putting this like cooler box, this water heater here in the electric fuse box in there. Also, who, who wants, do you know what I mean, to have tiled floors in your main bedroom? So we're just gonna pretend that this is like a little flat that we're renting out downstairs. So if you have a Sims, but like the thing is like in Discover University, there's already like a roommate system. Do you know what I mean? I, d I don't know if it's really that different to the roommate system if you want to rent out a, a basement because this is what I'm seeing a lot of people doing. They're saying, oh, you can do basements, but you can technically already do this with Discover University where you could literally put a basement downstairs and, you know, rent it out to a roommate and you can even lock the upstairs room so they can't use any other room of the house so it's not like that special like it's not anything groundbreakingly new but I guess it's a new way to go about it and earn money off it in a way that's a bit less glitchy than discover university system so anyway this is me just you know I'm not I'm not doing a fancy nice pretty build I'm just rushing it putting a bathroom in this is just a you know a little flat so it's not gonna be really really you know big and flamboyant and out there I'm just putting all of the basics in in terms of you know what you might have in a, a little flat oh my god this is tiny i haven't even bothered to put like the move objects on cheat on like i'm probably just rushing this okay but you can build up a nice little basement with some stuff and then you have to change your lot type to residential rental now if you're doing a base the problem is with a residential rental you have to choose whether everything sh is shared or everything is for each individual unit if you have a big house like this and you have to change every single single room to your residential rental is too much. So in settings, you can assign all rooms to this unit, which is the home unit. And then you could just manually select the ones you want to be a part of the second unit. So number two, I think I'm gonna make this downstairs bit here shared. In fact, I might put the electric box there as well. But yeah, if we make this number two, this room here, number two, and then obviously the stairwell to actually get in there, we have to make it shared. The only problem is like some things, like you can see this bit here and this bit here are technically like separate rooms even though it's the same room so you have to be really careful and just make sure that you like select everything properly as shared otherwise obviously they can't get in their room but we've selected the downstairs and everything shared so it's even random things like this decking up here because this is selected as number one we have to change this decking here to shared so that you go up the stairs like it's really weirdly strict but once we've done that okay it looks it's like done okay number two golden peak oh and it also gives us hints about like what kind of objects to include. God, I'm gonna have to use a move objects on cheat. This is an absolute nightmare. Okay, so we could have like a little mini fridge over here. Oh my God, this is so sad. I'd hate to live here. <laughs> a little tabletop oven on top of the fridge. Okay, a couple of, you know, cheap counters. So we've got some basic necessities in here, which is good. And then it says we want decorations. What kind of decorations do you want, mate? Whatever my eyes go to first, I'm not being fussy. I've literally, like I'm just chucking random things down because I'm literally just showing you as an example. Okay, and now we have this unit because it's on our property and we're the homeowners. We can feel the vacancy. 70 simoleons a day, gosh, that's so much. Although, see, the Lee household, an elder young adult charge at all, I don't think they're fit. We're gonna have to make the rent a little bit smaller just so, you know, one person can move in. There we go. Now we've got somebody living there. And now we've just very quickly, like, rented out our basement. And we can visit the unit with a loading screen. But there we go, now we can, you know, go 
into the neighbor's property or we can we can break in if we want to. Although this one's interesting because it's literally separated by two different doors. Oh look, the whole family's come in. <laughs> anyway, that's not the only one, okay? I've seen a lot of people make trailer parks in Oasis Springs, which I think is cool. And of course, I'm not building one, so I'm downloading it off the gallery. Although, guys, I'm gonna say, if you have full rent and you share stuff on the gallery, I'm gonna tell you something annoying. So this is labeled as a residential rental. It's a 40 by 30 lot. Now, I've, I, this is definitely the wrong lot, but I just wanna show you guys something that's a bit annoying. So this lot is currently set as a normal residential. If I go to download this trailer park off the gallery, it says not available for this lot. So first you have to change it firstly to a residential rental and then you can download it, which guys, this pisses me off because I feel like this is EA's way of blocking you from downloading certain things from the gallery. And it pisses me off a bit. This is why if you're uploading a residential rental to the gallery, please first upload it as a normal residential lot and then upload a second one as a residential rental. Because if you upload it as a residential rental only, people who don't own the full rent pack won't be able to download it. So it's really important that you set it as like you upload to. Anyway, this is a little trailer park. And oh, look, it's so cute, guys. Like this is so much fun, oh my God. The only thing, my only criticism is that the other apartments don't seem to automatically populate with other townies. So to show you what I mean, if we get Shanice to move into one of these, in The Sims 2, you would basically like get neighbors. But in The Sims 4, I don't really understand if the game gives you neighbors or if you're just here alone and you have to manually give yourself neighbors. Do you know what I mean? It just seems, I will admit that it is one of the most annoying things about not just this pack, but The Sims 4 in general is that you have to set up everything, create your own perfect storyline in The Sims 4. What that basically means is they're lazy sh and they can't be bothered to immerse you in the game from the offset. It annoys me to be honest. So you don't have neighbors from the offset. Let's pretend I bothered to make the effort to download households of the gallery and move them into these three lots. We have a functional trailer park. And remember, if you use cheats, which anybody can use console or PC, you can raise a unit cap up to 99. Now it does get very laggy if you add a ton more. And if you have a cheap crappy laptop, you might not be able to do like any more more than seven or eight units. But if you just want to raise it up, cause six by default is a bit small. If you wanted to raise it up just by eight and have eight different trailers, I think it's really cool. And you can just download little lots of the gallery like this and have a trailer park in one world. And it just makes the world, see, the thing I hate about The Sims 4 is you have to set up the game before you can just jump in and play the game. Do you know what I mean? Like it's so exhausting. It's not like The Sims 2 or 3 where there's already a million lots, a million households already there. Like you have to set it all up yourself. But if you can be bothered to set it all up yourself, I think it makes it a lot more alive. Do you know what I mean? Because this lot here is quite big, but now we've turned it into four separate lots. And if you wanted to, you could download a six lot trailer park easily and fit it in here. Another idea I've heard some people say is if you wanted to create a homeless storyline, you could make a homeless shelter in the game, which I think is pretty cool because you could literally set the rent to like one simoleon or zero simoleons. And it's not just that, okay, I think it makes certain worlds feel a lot more livable. I've actually been making a save file. Yes, I have. I haven't really spoken about it much. It's because like I come, like I don't touch it for months and then I always come back to it randomly. But this is part of my save file, okay, and before I even knew full rent was coming about, this lot here in Dowsel Valley, the very, very big one next to Start at Home, if you get, if you have Get Famous, you know what I mean. This lot is very, very unnecessarily big and I was working on creating like three, I don't know, like little rental units, which all look slightly different. So you could like, I was planning on using just the base game to have three Sims live in the same household, but now I can make three different households on the same lot. And like, you, I wouldn't bother messing around with making communal garden spaces for everyone. Like you don't have to do that. Like you could just make three separate lots, make them all three different units. And then you have three lots in one. And like even the driveway, the main driveway that you can't edit has 
three different driveways on here. So why is it just one big lot instead of three separate ones in the base game? I don't know, but now you can make it into three separate ones and that's why I like full rent for that. Also, as a part of my save file, I was actually working on making a, this is a retirement home that I was working on. It's not on the gallery yet, guys, because the save file's not done. But I was working on a little retirement home. It's, it's a bit shit right now. Like we've just got a little, you know, main common area here. We've got a little living room here. We've got a pretty outside bit here. And then we've got all of the main bedrooms, which I haven't properly furnished yet. And then we've, oh, well, obviously we've got the little kitchen area here too. So like, I'm probably now gonna turn this for my save file into a residential rental when I've obviously finished building it because, you know, it would just make it a lot nicer. Oh, this is the graveyard for my save file as well. <laughs> Can't have a save file without a graveyard. Another reason is if you own Discover University. Now, the university commons lots in The Sims 4, like they're very, very annoying. I don't know if you've played in Discover University, but it's absolute horror. Like it's literally hell because you have Sims all going into each other's rooms. It's an absolute mess. Unfortunately, you can't turn this into a rental, a uh, residential rental because technically, apparently it's a penthouse lot. So unfortunately you can't change the pre-made university housing, but there are separate lots. So again, for my save file, I haven't created everything in my save file. Some of it is literally stuff I downloaded off the gallery because I'm lazy. Yes, it's, a, it's not a crime to download things off the gallery and put it in your own save file, Jesus Christ. Anyway, this is a university housing lot that I downloaded off the gallery. But what I'm thinking of doing guys is changing it to a residential rental. And the reason why I personally think this is better because if you fit it with university students, you get the fun of just like being in your own, like you can set your own private bedroom and you can obviously have this like shared canteen area, but you don't have to deal with the annoyance of like, guys, I don't know, I'm gonna play B-roll on my screen of my Discover University review that I did. Like it's absolute hell when you live in university housing because the town needs to just have such dumb AI. Whereas if you do something like this as a residential rental and just set each individual room as like one lot, then it just makes it a lot more bearable and you don't have annoying NCPs coming in your room all the time and you only ever really socialize with them in the shared space, which I just think is cool. Even in like city living, okay, obviously we got apartments here, but if you own city living, you'll know this property here, the old salt house, which is just a huge random house, which is a bit annoying and ugly. I've literally just sorted by most popular and somebody on the gallery has actually already... See, this is the great thing about the gallery, guys. People are so passionate about building residential rentals. Like there's literally tons on the gallery that you can choose from. And don't worry if you don't own all the packs because objects will be replaced with other things or you can just replace them yourself. So this is an apartment building built on this original lot for this original lot. And as you can see, it's got, oh look, it's got like an on-site gym, which is a shared space and it's already got the predefined units as well so you've got like all of this stuff I just think it's amazing guys like this lot is superb by the way I love this lot I mean guys I might even like just having a brief look I'm gonna leave this in there for my save file because I think it looks great here that fits in perfectly this is why guys I love it also on a other YouTube video once I made this one here the pre on the preeminent domain lot this one is on the gallery for Magnolia Promenade I actually built this lot very very specifically as like totally empty lots. The lots come with a pre-fitted kitchen and a pre-fitted bathroom in every single lot, but all of them, apart from one, which is very barely minimally decorated as like a starter lot, all of the other ones have no decoration or furnishings in them. And I literally made it for you guys. You don't have to put it on this lot. It's on a 30 by 20 lot, which is still a very small lot size, but I built this kind of ugly modern apartment building and I built it so that you guys could furnish it because it's quite basic and has an easy to follow layout. Again, like you could feel somewhere like Magnolia Promenade. So even though Magnolia Promenade only has literally four lots in it, you can now have six households living in this tiny four lot neighborhood. That's why I think four rent's very practical. My review of The Sims 4 four rent was a little bit negative and that's because it genuinely just isn't a very great pack. As an overall package, the overall package is pretty bad. And I think it's such a shame that residential rentals are locked behind the system. I genuinely wish that they just released residential rentals as a game pack without a world and it came with a bare minimum amount of apartment style build mode 
different stuff and it was just solely like a tiny little game pack. It wouldn't even need to have the landlord events and tenant events because they get kind of annoying after a while. Which by the way, I found that you can actually turn this off in the settings if it does annoy you. But yeah, I just wish it was a game pack without this whole blow six bunch pack because it's so expensive. And apart from like, like don't get me wrong, rental residentials, they are a little bit glitchy. The events are totally glitched out. Almost everything in this pack is severely glitchy and broken. But actually just being able to like live very basically in a residential rental, they fix the ridiculously high property tax bug. So now you won't have those anymore. But like, I just feel like just simply just living in one does change the game in a very good way. I still do not recommend buying this pack because I think it's very unethical with how broken it is and EA just have not acknowledged barely any of the bugs and glitches in the pack. It's pretty severe. But for what it's worth, I just think being able to live in a residential rental gives you the flexibility to do so many different things with gameplay. If you want to see my process of building this apartment here, I'll link the video. I also link the video to the retirement home video where I tested if you can make a retirement home. It was very interesting, so make sure to check one of those videos out. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching. I will see you in the next one.